the lymphatic and the nerves of the kidney and suprarenal gland. The lymphatic vessels of the kidney form two plexuses, one in the substance of the kidney, one under the fibrous capsule, and one in the perirenal vessel. Four or five lymphatic drones leave the renal tissue and are joined by vessels from the capsule. The lymphatic vessels follow the renal vein to the lumbar. Lymph nodes. Lymph from the suprarenal glands also drain to the lumbar node. Lymphatic drainage of the ureters is also illustrated. The lumbar nodes drain through the lumbar lymphatic trunk to the to the chyle sister. The nerves of the kidneys and suprarenal glands are derived from the cellular plexus. The lesser and least thoracic splenic nerves and the aortic or renal ganglion. The main efferent innervation of the kidney is vasomotor autonomic nerves supplying the afferent and efferent arterioles. The nerves of the suprarenal glands are derived from the thoracic splenic nerves. Some of the abdominopelvic splenic nerves convey presynaptic sympathetic fibers, fibers that have passed through the paravertebral ganglia without synapsing to the paravertebral ganglia, exclusively in the case of the suprarenal medulla. The presynaptic fibers also pass the paravertebral ganglia without synapsing the end directly of the secretory cell of the suprarenal medulla. Take a look in your atlas, all the figures and the pictures from the lymphatic and the nerves of the kidney and suprarenal gland. Also, take a look in your atlas, the diaphragm and its nerve gland. A postal board like consisting of white muscular sleeves that attach to the internal surfaces of the inferior postal carnage and their adjoining ribs in each side. The postal parts from the right and the top. A lumbar part arising from two abominable parts, the medial and lateral archway lumens, and the three superior lumbar vertebrae. The lumbar part forms right and left muscular cura that ascends to the central tendon. The cura of the diaphragm are musculotendinous bundles that arise from the anterior surfaces of the bodies of the superior three lumbar vertebrae, the anterior longitudinal ligaments and the cortex. The right cross, larger and longer than the left cross, arises from the first three or four lumbar vertebrae. The left cross arises from the first two or three because it lies to the left of the midline. And to find that the esophageal Yatus is a formation in the right cross, or if the muscular fibers found in each side of the yatus are traced inferiorly. They pass to the right of the aortic yatus. The aortic yatus uh, mainly formed by the right and left pura and the fibrous media. Are quays ligaments, uniting them at the arcs over the anterior aspects of the aorta. The diaphragm is also attached 
when it started to the video a ladder of archway ligaments, a thickening of the fascia which covers the psoas major and quadratus reporting muscles, respectively pericardial brain ligament, use the central segments of the diaphragm. With the inferior surface of the fibrous pericardium, strong external part of the fibrous pericardial sac, and closing the heart. Take a look in your atlas. The blood vessels of the diaphragm, vessels and nerves of the diaphragm. The arteries of the diaphragm form a branch-like pattern on both the superior and inferior surfaces that are to use supplying the superior surface of the diaphragm or pericardiophrenic and musculophrenic artery branches of the internal thoracic artery, superior phrenic artery arising from the thoracic surface. The arteries supplying the inferior surface of the diaphragm are the inferior phrenic artery, which typically are the first branches of the abdominal aorta. The veins draining the superior surface of the diaphragm are the pericardiophrenic and musculophrenic veins. Take a look at your atlas. The lymphatic and nerves of the diaphragm. These uh, musculophrenic veins empty into the internal thoracic vein and on the right side, a superior phrenic vein that drains into the IVC. Some veins from the posterior curvature of the diaphragm drain into the aspigus and hemiacigal vein. The Inferior phrenic veins drain blood from the inferior surface of the diaphragm. The right inferior phrenic vein usually opens into the IVC. The left inferior phrenic vein is usually double, with one branch passing anterior to the esophageal, the atus to the end of the IVC, and the other. More posterior branch usually joins the left superior vein. The lymphatic plexus then on the thoracic and abdominal surfaces of diaphragm communicates freely. The anterior and posterior diaphragmatic lymph nodes are on the thoracic surface of the diaphragm. Lymph from these nodes drain into the parasternal posterior mediastina and turning lymph nodes. Lymph vessels from the abdominal surface of the diaphragm drain into the anterior diaphragmatic phrenic and superior lumbar lymph nodes. Lymphatic vessels are then on the inferior surface of the diaphragm, continuing the primary lymph for absorption of peritoneal fluid and substances introduced by IV injection. The entire motor supply to the diaphragm is from the phrenic nerves, each of which is distributed to part of the distal branch and arises from the ventral rami of C3 through C5 segments of the spinal cord. The phrenic nerves and also supply sensory fibers to most of the diaphragm. Peripheral parts of the diaphragm receive their sensory nerve supply from the intercostal nerve and the subcostal nerve. Diaphragmatic apertures. The diaphragmatic apertures uh, permit structures, vessels, nerves, and spines to pass between the thorax and abdomen. The three large apertures of the IVC, esophagus, and aorta are the cavity opening, the esophageal hiatus, and the aortic hiatus. The cava opening venal cava foramen. The cava opening is an aperture in the central tendon, primarily from the IVC, also passing through the cava opening. 
are terminal branches of the right brain nerve and a few lymphatic vessels on their way from the liver to the middle, phrenic and mediastinal lymph nodes. The cavern opening is located to the right of the median plane at the junction of the femurs, right and middle plates. The most superior of the three diaphragmatic apertures, the cavern opening lies at the level of the disc between the T8 and T9 vertebrae. The IVC is adhering to the margins of the opening. Consequently, when the diaphragm contacts, it widens the opening and violates the IVC. This changes facilitate blood flow to the heart through this nerve vein. Esophageal hiatus aperture. Esophageal hiatus is an over aperture from the esophagus in the muscle of the right cross of the diaphragm at the level of the and vertebra. The esophageal hiatus also transmits the anterior and posterior vagal trunks. Esophageal branches of the left gastric vessel and a few lymphatic vessels. The fiber of the right crosses diaphragm, the could say, distance to the hiatus. Forming a muscular sphincter from the esophagus that constricts is when the diaphragm contracts. The esophageal hiatus is superior to and to the left of the aortic hiatus. In most cases, 60%, 70%, both margins of the hiatus are formed by muscular bundles of the right cross. In some cases, 30 to 40%, a superficial muscular bundle from the left cross contributes to the formation of the right margin of the hiatus. The aortic hiatus aperture. The aortic hiatus is the opening posterior to the diaphragm for the aorta because the aorta does not pierce the diaphragm. Blood flow through it is not affected by its movement during its perspiration. The aorta passes between the cura of the diaphragm posterior to the median artery ligament which is at the level of the inferior border of the T12 vertebrae. The aperture for the aorta also transmits the thoracic duct and sometimes the acetosphane. Other apertures in the diaphragm, in addition to the three main apertures, there is a small opening, the sternocostal form and triangle, between the sternal and costal attachments of the diaphragm. This foramen transmits the lymphatic vessels from the diaphragmatic surfaces of the liver and the superior epigastric vessel. The epigastric trunks pass deep to the medial arcuate ligament. There are two small apertures in each cross of the diaphragm. One transmits the greater and the other the lesser splatnic nerve. The action of the diaphragm. When the diaphragm contracts, its stones move inferiorly so that the convexity of the diaphragm is somewhat flattened. Although this movement is often described as the descent of the diaphragm, only the tones of the diaphragm descend. Its periphery remains attached to the rib and cartilage of the inferior six ribs. As the diaphragm descends, it pushes the abdominal viscera inferiorly. This increases the volume of the thoracic cavity and decreases the intrathoracic pressure, resulting in air being taken into the lung. In addition, the volume of the abdominal cavity decreases slightly and intra-abdominal pressure increases so far. Movements of the diaphragm are also important in circulation because they increase intra-abdominal pressure and decrease intra-thoracic pressure help to return and explore to the heart. When the diaphragm contracts, 
compressing the abdominal visceral blood in the IVC is formed superiorly into the heart. The diaphragm is at its most inferior level when a person is supine. With the upper body lower, the present left work position. When a person is supine, the abdominal visceral push the diaphragm superiorly in the thoracic cavity. When a person lies on one side, the any diaphragm raises to a more superior level because of the greater push of the visceral on that side. Conversely, the diaphragm assumes an inferior level when a person is sitting or standing. For this reason, people with this snare difficulty of breathing prefer to sit up and not like that. Take a look in your atlas. The apertures of diaphragm, the transverse section of the abdomen at the levels of the renal skin, the posterior abdominal wall is mainly composed from deep to superficial of five lower vertebrae and associated for the posterior abdominal wall muscles so as quadratus lumbaros ciliatus transverse abdominal and oblique muscles. Lumbar plexus composed of the ventral rami of the lumbar spinal nerves, fascia including thoracolumbar fascia diaphragm contributing to the superior part of posterior wall, fat nerve vessels and link nerves. Fascia of the posterior abdominal wall. The posterior abdominal wall is covered with a continuous layer of the abdominal fascia that lies between the parietal peritoneum and the muscles. The fascia lining the posterior abdominal wall is continuous with the transversal fascia that lines the transverse abdominal wall. The soas fascia covering the soas major is attached medially to the lumbar vertebrae and pelvic brain. The soas fascia sheath is thickened superiorly and forms the medial arcuate ligament. The soas fascia fuses laterally with the quadratus lumboris and thoracolumbar lumbar fascia. Inferior to the iliac first, the psoas fascia is continuous with a part of the iliac fascia covering the iliacus. The psoas fascia also blends with the fascia covering the quadratus lumborum. The quadratus lumborum fascia covering the quadratus lumborum is a dense membranous layer that is continuous laterally with the inferior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. The quadratus lumborum fascia attaches to the axial surface of the dander cell of the lumbar vertebrae, the iliac crest and the crown ring, and is continuous with the transversalis fascia. The quadratus lumborum fascia thickens superiorly to form the lateral arcuate ligament and is adhering superiorly to the iliac lumbar ligament. Take a look at your atlas. The posterior lateral view of the posterior abdominal wall. Take a look in your atlas, the muscles and nerves of the posterior abdominal wall. The thoracolumbar fascia is an extensive fascia sheath that splits into anterior and posterior layers, enclosing the deep back muscle. It is thin and transparent, where it covers the thoracic parts of the deep muscle, but it is thick and strong in the lumbar region. The lumbar part of the thoracolumbar fascia extending between the 12th ribs and the iliac crest attached laterally to the internal oblique and transverse abdominal muscles. 
the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall. The main pair muscles in the posterior abdominal wall are the psoas major, passing interlaterally, the iliacus laying along the lateral sides of the inferior part of the psoas major, the quadratus lumborum lying adjacent to the transverse process of the lumbar vertebrae and lateral superior parts of the psoas major. The psoas major, the long, the fusiform psoas major, lies lateral to the lumbar vertebrae. Psoas is the grip for mean muscle of the lower. The psoas passes interlaterally deep to the inguinal ligament to reach the left retroplanter of the femur. The lumbar plexus of nerves is embedded in the posterior part of psoas anterior to the lumbar transfer process. The iliacus. The iliacus is the large triangular muscle that lies along the lateral side of the inferior part of the psoas major. This muscle extends across the sacro iliac joint and attaches to the superior two thirds of the iliac fossa. Most of its fiber joints extend lower of the psoas major. Together, the psoas and iliacus form the iliopsoas, the chief flexor of the thigh. It is also a stabilizer of the hip joint that helps to maintain the erect posture of this joint. The quadratus lumborum, the quadrilateral quadratus lumborum, forms a thick muscular shield in the posterior abdominal wall. It lies adjacent to the lumbar transfer process and is broader inferiorly. Closer to the 12 degrees, the quadratus lumborum is closed by the lateral archway ligament. The subcostal nerve passes posterior to this ligament and goes interlaterally of the quadratus lumborum. Branches of the lower flesh swim clearly on the anterior surface of the muscle. Nerves of the posterior abdominal wall, there are somatic and autonomic nerves in the posterior abdominal wall. Somatic nerves of the posterior abdominal wall, the subcostal nerves, the ventral rami of deep well, arise in the thorax. Pass posterior to lateral archway ligament into the abdomen and run interlaterally on the anterior surface of the quadratus lumborum. They pass to the transverse abdominal and internal oblique muscles to supply the external oblique and skin of the anterolateral abdominal wall. The lumbar nerves pass from the spinal cord through the core foramina inferior to the corresponding vertebrae where they divide into dorsal and ventral primary ramus. Each ramus contains sensory and motor fibers. The dorsal primary ramus pass posteriorly to supply the muscles and skin of the back where the ventral primary rami pass into the psoas major muscles and are connected to the sympathetic trunks by rami communicate. The lumbar plexus of nerves is in the posterior part of the psoas major anterior to the lumbar transfer process. This nerve network is composed of the ventral rami of L1 through L4 nerves. All this rami receive great rami communicate, communicating branches from the sympathetic structure. And the superior two stem white rami communicate to the trunk. Uh, the nerves and branches of lumbar plexus are three large. The obturator nerve L2 through L4 emerge from the medial quarter of the psoas major and passes through the pelvis to the medial side, supplying the abductor muscle. The femoral nerve L2 through L4 emerge from the lateral border of the psoas major and innervates the iliacus and passes deep to the inguinal ligament. 
to the anterior side, supplying the flexors of the hip and extensors of the knee. Lomosacral from L4, L5, passes over the ala wings of the sacrum and descends into the pelvis to participate in the formation of the sacral plexus along with the ventral running of S1 to S4 first. The ilio inguinal and ilio hypogastric nerve L1 arises from the ventral ramus of L1 and enters the abdominal posterior to the middle arc coil ligament and passes or laterally anterior to the quadratus lumborum muscle. They pierce the transverse abdominal muscle near the anterior superior iliac spine and pass to the internal and external oblique muscle to supply the skin of the superphobic and inguinal region. Both nerves also supply branches to the abdominal musculature. The genic femoral nerve pierces the anterior surface of the soft nature and bruise inferiorly on it, deep to the psoas fascia. It divides lateral to the common and external iliac arteries into femoral and genital branches. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, L2, L3, runs interlaterally on the iliacus and enters the tight uh, posterior to the inguinal ligament, just medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. It supplies skin of the anterior lateral surface of the thigh. Autonomic nerves of the posterior abdominal wall. The autonomic nerves of the abdomen consist of one cranial nerve, the vagus, and several different plasmic nerves that the liver presynaptic sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers to the nerve, plexus and sympathetic ganglia along the abdominal, porta and the periarterial extensions of those plexus that reach the abdominal viscera when intrinsic parasympathetic ganglia occurs. The sympathetic part of the abdominal Autonomic nervous system in the abdomen consists of abdominal pelvic sliding nerves of the thoracic and abdominal and sympathetic nerves. Prevertebral sympathetic ganglia, abdominal autonomic plexus, periarterial plexus, and the plexus are shared with the parasympathetic nervous system and visceral afferent fibers. The pelvic splatting nerves are the source of sympathetic innervation in the abdominal cavity. The presynaptic sympathetic fibers they convey or originated from the cell bodies in the intermediolateral cell column or the lateral form of great matter of spinal cord segments. T7 to L2 or L3. The fibers pass flexibly through the ventral roots. Ventral running and five running beneath and of thoracic and upper lumbar spinal nerves to reach the sympathetic drums. They pass to the paratheral ganglia of this drums without lasting to enter the apropelic plant nerve that convey them to the paradigm ganglia of the abdominal cavity. The abdominal pelvic splanic nerves are as follows. Lower thoracic splanic nerves, the greater, lesser, and least splanic nerves from the thoracic part of the sympathetic trunk and lumbar splanic nerves from the lumbar cord of the sympathetic trunk. The lower thoracic splanic nerves are the main source of presynaptic sympathetic fibers serving as abdominal viscera. The greater from the sympathetic trunk of T5 to T9 or T10 vertebrae. Lesser from T10 and T11 levels. 
and leaves from the C12 layers, plasmic nerves are a specific thoracic plasmic nerves that arise from the thoracic part of the sympathetic joints and pierce the corresponding cross of the diaphragmatic vein. The presynaptic sympathetic fibers to the cilia, superior mesenteric and aorticorena sympathetic ganglia. The lumbar splanic nerves arise from the abdominal part of the sympathetic front. The sympathetic front extends into the abdomen from the thorax by passing posterior to the middle arcuate ligament of the diaphragm. They lie on the acerolateral aspects of the bodies of the lumbar vertebrae in a group formed by the adjacent psoas major muscle. The abdominal part of the trunk is composed of four lumbar uh, sympathetic ganglia and interconnecting fibers. Laterally, the trunk receive quite runny community and is from the dental rami of the L1, L2, and occasionally L3 spinal nerves. And then gray rami community back to the adjacent dental rami. Medially, the abdominal sympathetic trunk give all three to four lower splint nerves, which pass to the intermesenteric, superior mesenteric and superior hypogastric vessels conveying presynaptic sympathetic fibers to the 